Good afternoon. Welcome and thank you for joining us for the February or for excuse me, yeah, February monthly education series. My name is Katherine Johnson and I'll be your host today. This session will be recorded and available to view again for those of us that are unable to make it. As usual, your lines have been muted upon entry to the webinar. Unless you are presenting, please keep yourself muted. There are other ways of interacting with WebEx features we'd like to be, you to be aware of, like sharing a reaction by clicking on the smiley face. We encourage you to use the reactions during the meeting to pump up the speaker and express yourself. If you are watching the replay on YouTube, please note that any expressions will not be visible on YouTube. Another way to interact during the webinar is to use the chat feature. Please ask questions by typing in the chat throughout the presentation. Make sure to select everyone in the chat box. We will try to keep track of the questions and we'll try and address them at the end of the presentation or within the webinar follow-up email. On the agenda today, we will cover some brief program updates followed by the objectives for today's webinar. And then I will turn the mic over to Lynn Kleckner from the Health Partners Inspire Stroke Program and she will give you an overview of their program. Just some quick program updates from our team. We mentioned last webinar that we are eagerly awaiting the release of the Paul Coverdale National Stroke Program funding. Well, we're still waiting. The, and while we're, the funding opportunity has yet to be posted, we are anticipating it to come any day now. We are only one of 13 states receiving this funding, so you may hear from us for asking for letters of support if we haven't already, as this is one of our primary streams of funding to support the Minnesota Stroke Program work. We also might be pretty busy during this time, so please grant us some grace if we are a little late responding to things. On the screen, you will see the save the date for our stroke, program, our stroke coordinator half day workshop set for Thursday, May 23rd from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Heritage Center of Brooklyn Center. It is free to stroke coordinators and will be a great place to make connections with other stroke coordinators from across the state. And just a reminder that we will be hosting another coffee talk session with Chris Kleckner this com on this coming Tuesday, February 27th at 10 a.m. We will be chatting about the social determinants of health and life's essential eight. Just briefly, today's objectives are upon completion of this webinar, learners should be able to review the evidence and stroke support and community outreach programming. Describe the Stroke Inspire program, its mission, vision, and services, and upcoming community initiatives. And locate the Inspire contact and activity information to connect with community members and survivors to Inspire programming. And at this time, I'd like to turn over the webinar to Lynn Kleckner, Stroke, and stroke Inspire leader at Health Partners, to talk about the Stroke Inspire program. Lynn, the microphone is yours. Great. Well, thank you so much for having me. Um, as mentioned, my name is Lynn Kleckner. I lead the Stroke Inspire program, and my background is as an occupational therapist. Um, prior to this position, I was working in acute care, so um, got lots of exposure to the hospital side of stroke rehab, and then um, jumping into this community role has been really really interesting and great. So thank you so much for having me. And um, she had already mentioned those objectives. So we'll just jump right into the background here. Um, you can skip next slide. Yep. So go ahead. All right. So big picture, Inspire is stroke support programming for caregivers, community partners, community members, and also stroke survivors. Um, I will just read these couple of bullets here and then we'll move along. So Inspire provides stroke education, community programs, support groups, and wellness offerings to stroke survivors. We give participants the opportunity to connect, encourage one another, volunteer in the community, and to participate in many other unique experiences. And it's important to note that we're funded fully on grants and fundraising efforts. Um, I just think that's one of the coolest things about this program is the amount of support that we have from community partners and donors who believe in this enough to be able to support this program. And then here is our vision to provide exemplary care to stroke survivors, caregivers, and families through support, resources, and outreach. So go ahead and next slide. So Inspire began thanks to this woman. Her name is Karen Bjorgon, and um, she was in this position for, I think, a little over 25 years. And she realized that she actually is a stroke survivor herself. She had her stroke 
Um, I believe when she was 32, just three weeks after having a baby. So after that, she mentioned feeling very isolated and like she was looking for a new purpose, um, as many stroke survivors do. And so she took matters into her own hands and got the funding and began Inspire. Um, so it's been it's been a big shoes to fill um, and an amazing experience being able to come in and um, pick up where she left off as she had just retired. So we can do the next slide. So who can be referred? So these people <laughs> and many more. So I like to put their faces on just to um, as a nice reminder of, you know, these are real people and real community members. And this is really who this is for. Um, so these are stroke survivors. There's a couple of caregivers actually in that collage as well. Um, and, you know, we're really looking for those referrals of stroke survivors. They can be hospitalized. They can be community dwelling. They may have discharged years ago and now they're looking for support or maybe they discharged just last week um, and they're looking for support. So we will take them anytime along their journey. Um, and for reference, our current participants range from, like I said, months to years since their stroke. Um, I do like to bring up an example of a young man that we had who joined while well, he was still on inpatient rehab at the VA and he was joining virtually and now he joins us multiple times a week. He's been, I think he's a year and a half out from his stroke now. So he's, we've been a really um, constant source of support for him um, beginning during his hospitalization. Um, and then as I mentioned, we also have groups for caregivers and um, I do like to make it noted that it's important that these referrals don't have to be from the health partners or Park Nicollet system. We are open and welcoming to absolutely anybody who feels like they need these services. In fact, we had someone call in from England last week. <laughs> so we're, we're worldwide outreach now, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so go ahead and next slide. So we'll talk a little bit about our programming and you can skip to this next slide. And I do like to just put in some evidence talking about this. Um, I think the benefit does kind of speak for itself, but it's even, I think it's even more impactful when we can look at what research is saying. And I acknowledge this is an older study, but it says it, it says, you know, the benefit of this just so well. So in summary, this study actually says that um, stroke survivors with, um, more severe strokes, but social support like support group programming actually had better functional outcomes than stroke survivors with lower stroke severity who didn't have social support. Um, so it's saying that socially isolated patients may be at a particular risk for a poorer outcome. Um, and that's what we always want, right? Is just a better outcome for any stroke survivor. Um, and so you can go to the next slide. And then this one here too talks about how, um, what the benefit is for caregivers. So um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about our caregiver and survivor support groups. Um, and so I bring in this caregiver study, which I believe was just published, yeah, last September. Um, but they were asking caregivers, you know, what it's like to be them or what their experiences are. And they were saying it's critical um, that they have these support groups and the social support as they are, also navigating the issues of caring for someone with a stroke. Um, so you can go ahead on to that next slide. So I'll jump into our programming. So you'll see on here, um, as I've mentioned, we have those support groups for caregivers and survivors. Those occur on virtual and both in-person platforms. So there's a nice ability, you know, depending on where you are, your proximity to a hospital. We have one in St. Paul and then also one in St. Louis Park. So um, the Neuroscience Center in St. Paul and then Methodist Hospital in St. Louis Park. Um, if neither of those are within a good proximity, I really encourage people to use our virtual platforms. Um, so those are the support groups, but then we also have activity and educational based groups too. Um, and so I'll talk more about the activity based groups and the groups there you see with the asterisks are ones that I'm going to dive a little bit more into here um, as we go along. The green box is an upcoming group. So that group I'm going to roll out in the fall and that's a new survivor and educational support series. Um, and that one should have an asterisk next to it too, because I will be talking about that some more. Um, but this is just a nice summary page of our, our current offerings. You can go next slide. Okay, 
So to dive into our education group, um, this one occurs the second Thursday of the month. It's free, it's virtual, absolutely anybody can join. Um, and what we do is we bring in guest speakers um, from within our system, from outside the system. Um, some of them are healthcare providers, some of them are not. Um, but they have an expert area in stroke. And so we ask them to come and present on what it is that they um, know best. Um, I like to highlight kind of some of the variety that we have. So you'll see, and this was last year's lineup. So you see all 12 months um, of what we did last year. Um, you'll see we have some rehab staff on there. We have some reps from the functional e -STEM machines, um, which maybe some of you are familiar with, nurses, physicians, psychiatrists, but then also community partners like the state services from the blind was really cool talking about low vision resources. Um, and then also um, those, into, I think, I believe it was rec therapy, not rec therapists. Um, um, Oh my gosh, a team from Courage Kenny. I'm sorry, I'm blanking on their official title right now. And MinCam. So you can go ahead onto the next slide. And a little more evidence here. Um, and this just kind of builds up the importance of having these educational groups or these options. Um, obviously, we want to catch people and provide this education before they have a stroke. But this, this study was saying um, that stroke survivors who participate in these types of groups actually have um, improved symptom knowledge, improved risk factor knowledge, and improved action knowledge. Um, so this study highlighted that support groups should be viewed as important partners in community stroke education. So, um, you know, we have this separate educational group, but that's not to say that we don't talk about, um, you know, like the BFAST or um, you know, various symptoms or what to do during our support groups as well. So um, education is a major driver of, you know, a lot of a lot of our programming. So you can do the next slide. And so this is a relatively newer project, um, but I have been similar to, I believe this program is I've been recording our educational sessions and uploading them to a YouTube channel. So um, now, if someone says, gosh, I wish I had more information about returning to driving after stroke, I can say you can go to our YouTube channel and we've been fortunate to have a OT who's already talked about driving after stroke um, or, you know, being physically active. We have some activity groups on there like deep breathing, melodic breathing. Um, and so this will be where our support groups continue to live um, so people can access that, or our support groups, our educational groups and those presentations can live at any time um, for someone to access when they're looking for information. So you can go on to the next page. Um, this is a program I do like to highlight. So NeuroWell is a larger program that um, is within the Health Partner System. Um, it has a, a wide variety of um, fee-based services for a variety of neurological illnesses and injuries. I bring this up because they do have a program that's called Brain Gym, and it is a fee-based service. And this program is virtual. It alternates for one hour, um, I believe every 15 minutes between cognitive and physical exercise and challenges. Um, and there's various, they've graded it differently based on, you know, what type of person might be taking it, what their needs are. Um, and so that's a fantastic resource read, led by professional staff. Um, and I bring this up because we actually have a scholarship where we're able to sponsor stroke survivors to use this program for two months for free. Um, so these individuals are able to get every, or twice a week, every week for two months, they're able to take advantage of this service for free. Um, and we have no questions asked um, when taking, you know, when doing their intake. So we don't need their financial information or anything like that. So i um, super proud to be able to offer that to stroke survivors. So go ahead and next slide. These are some pictures from our activity groups. So the one on the top right there, that's from our Inspired Voices group. Um, it began as a music group. It still has a very heavy music um, theme to it, but we've really started shifting more into breathing exercises. Um, we're finding we're getting kind of better buy-in from that. I think people are, you know, understandably shy when it comes to singing with each other in a conference room. And so we've started to integrate more breathing and mindfulness techniques into that group. 
Um, and then on the top left is from a speakers club, similar to a Toastmasters, if you're familiar with that, that's fantastic for those folks who have aphasia and want to practice talking in an environment where they feel safe and supported. Um, but then also a really great spot for people who want to practice just public speaking or want to listen to interesting stories or those individuals who want to practice planning and organizing um, the information they're going to deliver. Um, and then on the bottom, that was just a day after a support group, but we do also have um, a virtual mindful meditation and then a camera club or a photography club. And that I could do a whole presentation on by itself. So we will leave it at that for now. So go ahead on to the next slide. So I do have a program called Inspire Mentors, and these are stroke survivors and one caregiver at the moment who volunteer to go into the hospital rooms to encourage and support new stroke survivors um, and also their families. And so I'll read these objectives here and talk a little bit more about it. So these individuals who volunteer provide a continuum of support, encouragement and resource facilitation to the survivors and their caregivers. And they promote engagement with, with our program upon their eventual return to the community. So, the number one thing that we encourage these volunteers to do when they go into the community or into these hospital rooms is just listen. Um, if they're asked about their story, they're more than welcome to share it. But I think just having that level of ground of someone who's been in that position um, is just um, incredibly impactful for these survivors and caregivers to, to have that person listening to them and then to see them out doing meaningful things in their community. Um, and then off that second objective, we are encouraging them to join our support group when they're ready. And in parentheses, you'll see Inspire folder. Those are folders that we hand out um, with our information, but then also a lot of community resource flyers in there as well. Um, so that's a pretty powerful resource and I'm super proud to be able to have this program. So the individuals who are up visiting the patients are at least one year post stroke. So ideally they've found kind of their stride and that, you know, um, they can, they can share some pretty good insight about recovery. Um, and then I need them to be a participant with Inspire for at least six months so that they can know what we're about and, you know, what they're promoting. So go ahead on to the next slide. And again, a little bit more research. So the conclusion here, it says peer support can potentially enhance service to stroke survivors. So improving that experience to those survivors in the hospital, but then also promote community reintegr reintegration for the volunteers. Um, and so I'm gonna go on to that next slide and touch on that a little bit more. So. You know, if you remember, I'm an OT by background, so this is, you know, extra exciting to me and maybe many of you as well. But um, these stroke survivors come to me and they maybe want to return to work one day or their therapist ret or refers them to me and says, hey, maybe you'd be a good volunteer if you're trying to get back to work, um, for example. And so, you know, based off of this research and another study, Stroke survivors feel that rehabilitation and familiar environments and therapeutic activities that reflect real life could help their community reintegration. And so what a perfect opportunity for these volunteers to practice things like keeping a routine, completing onboarding and interview processes with these hospitals. So that's no small feat because my the sites currently are Regents Hospital and Methodist Hospital. Um, so they practice those interview skills there too. They have to interact with professional staff and community members. They're either driving or using public transit or organizing transportation to the sites. They have to navigate the hospital buildings. I put an exclamation point next to that because hospitals are difficult to navigate for about anybody, I think. Um, I do have them take notes about their visits. They have to learn to advocate for their needs and accommodations so that this can be a rewarding experience for them. Um, and then they also need to work on that time management, arriving on time, letting me know when they can't make it. So um, it's really a mutually beneficial opportunity, I believe, for the volunteers, but then also for the stroke survivors who receive these visits. So on to the next slide. These are last year's numbers. Um, th this is just some bigger information about all the volunteers that 
are involved with Inspire. Um, currently, I have 15 mentors across both of my sites at Methodist Hospital. I actually am getting very, very close to having someone being able to visit patients seven days a week. Um, the number is greater than seven on that chart because I have people who alternate throughout the month. Um, and then the same situation at Regents Hospital. Last year, we were able to accomplish 552 visits. And that's not to say 552 new survivors, rather 552 interactions. And I distinguish between that because a lot of these survivors are seeing individuals, you know, two, three times because they're on inpatient rehab units. And so um, I don't think that's any less valuable because they really get to be their partners as they make that improvement and have that long term, longer term relationship with someone consistent in the hospital. Um, to date today, as of January 1st, up until yesterday, we had 240 visits. And so having that larger, we've really worked on adding more volunteers. And so I think um, they're going to blow that number out of the water this year. So very proud of them. Next page or next slide. And then so to touch on the community aspects, and I put education in parentheses here because that's always our underlying theme is providing that education about prevention. Um, and so this was the list of all the places we went last year, touching roughly 1100 to 1500 community members. And when I say we, I mean myself and then Liz Holt, who maybe many of you are familiar with. She's the stroke system manager at um, Health Partners. And so um, if someone comes and asks us to speak about stroke, I don't think we've really said no yet. We're always happy to go and just spread that word. Um, talking a lot about risk factors, um, the be fast, what to do, what happens when you have a stroke, that sort of thing. So next page. These are our referral networks, um, the Stroke Association, the Minnesota Brain Injury Alliance, fantastic partners. All of these are fantastic partners. MINCAN, the American Stroke Association, Courage Kenny, and then of course the Minnesota Department of Health. So you can do the next page. And I've really worked on building our social media and marketing presence too. So um, hopefully now if someone's looking for stroke support, they can just Google stroke support near me and um, Inspire can pop up. But you'll see we have many ways to access our programming. So now Facebook, YouTube, Eventbrite, I'll touch more on that in a minute. Um, our Health Partner Stroke Center web pages. A SharePoint for internal partners, um, NeuroWell has a website, but then also, as you saw previously, listing on MDH's program websites and then listings on the American Stroke Association website. So you can advance. And for anyone who's interested, um, I do think our newsletter is probably the best form of communication that we use right now. Um, I send it out every other week on a Monday. And I, I like to highlight this because I add education in every single newsletter. So if community partners are reading this, um, they do get that education or stroke survivors as well, obviously, if they're reading this too. Um, and the BFAST has a permanent residency in there. So um, we work really hard just to spread the BFAST all across, you know, to anybody who will listen. And so um, that is always in our newsletters. But then also I update um, articles from the American Heart Association, American Stroke Association. I like to connect community partners who are doing research um, to stroke survivors this way. So um, it's it's probably the most dynamic form or resource that we have. Um, all I need is an email if people want this information. So you can do the next page. These are some pictures from some events. I always think pictures are nice for some context. Um, so we did an unmasking event with the Minnesota Brain Injury Alliance last May. We're going to do it again this year. We do a flower sale fundraiser. Um, we walked in strides for stroke last year. And then we have fun things like picnics um, during the summer. So next page. And so um, to wrap us up here, I want to talk a little bit about some of the research that we're implementing and then the goals of where we'd like to go as a program so you can advance. So some new goals 
for the upcoming year is to integrate into the Hmong and Spanish communities. Somali's on that list as well. Um, I wish I had the bandwidth to do all of them at the same time, but I have to start somewhere. And this is, um, we had really good traction in these communities. So um, we're going to integrate into the Hmong and Spanish communities. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that when I talk about research. So I'll move along here too. Um, we're going to implement physical exercise programming. And I say exercise because really the goal is to decrease sedentary time. Um, and this is in a partnership with a researcher at the U of M. Um, um, and she is working on decreasing sedentary time and researching decreasing sedentary time after stroke. Um, and so I think exercise is probably the clearest way to put that. Um, and decreasing sedentary time isn't necessarily as attractive, but really that's kind of the underlying theme of what we're going to try to be doing this year. And the new stroke survivor education and support group, that is going to be a group where we are going to create cohorts twice a year of stroke survivors within their first two years of having a stroke and provide an educational series that meets twice a month um, over a six month cycle. So there's gonna be 12 classes and then they're gonna have common topics. So um, an educational topic for the first half followed by a support group style. And the reason for this, obviously education is fantastic, but we're finding in our support groups that those individuals who are newly, um, newer stroke survivors have different priorities and questions than the folks who are in my support groups who've been at it for about eight to 10 years. Um, and so hopefully we can create cohorts of people who can um, kind of be on this journey together while also answering a lot of those common questions that come up in those first couple of years. Next slide. I'm running an impact survey, and this is with a really fantastic collaboration with MDH. Um, and so thank you all for that. Um, we're looking at what exactly is the impact of being an Inspire participant on the quality of life of these stroke survivors compared to people who are stroke survivors but are not involved in Inspire. So you can go ahead and next slide. And the next research study, which is coming, is answering the question, what is it like to be among stroke survivor or caregiver? We know a lot of the research is out there about statistics, um, about, you know, discrepancies in, you know, how they receive, not how they receive care, but um, their knowledge or their risk factors or their time to get to the hospital. Um, discharge statistics. We know those things. Those have been researched and very, very well. Um, but I'm having a hard time finding what it's like to be among stroke survivor, um, specifically in the community. And before I build programming, I think that's something that we need to really understand. Um, and so this is a new project that I'm really excited about with um, Emily Kringle at the University of Minnesota. Um, and some other staff from the Health Partners Institute, MDH, and then also Liz Holt from the Health Partners Stroke System. So you can do the next slide. So here's how to get connected. So all of our programming is now located on Eventbrite. So you'll find information for virtual groups, but then also in-person groups here. Um, I have lots of promotional handouts with QR codes, which will take you to this site. Also my email and phone number are on there. Um, or if someone's interested and you have their consent, please just send me their name and I'm happy to reach out to them, their name and their contact information. Next slide. These are the individuals. It looks like I do have a minute to read what they said. So in every newsletter, I try and do a spotlight which showcases the people who are actually involved in Inspire. Um, so Jen on the left says, give it a try. You don't have to be on camera or talk, but just listen and learn. And over time, you may have a question you want to ask or not, but you are not alone. And then for time's sake, I'll read Larry. He says, we can help them get through the experience, getting involved and becoming more active certainly aids recovery. Next slide. There's my contact information. And um, please feel free to reach out with any questions, reach out anytime. And thank you so, so much for uh, having me to speak today. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Lynn. Does anyone have any questions at this point? I don't see any in the chat. My colleague will be putting the uh, chat for the, the link for the uh, survey for your uh, contact hours in the chat shortly. Um, but if anybody has any questions, feel free to put them in right now or raise your hand. 
How does one get a referral to them? Um, so please just email this either stroke inspire at health partners or my personal email with um, a name or a phone number and email and I just reach out to them. Okay. It looks like Jackie may have a question as well. Go ahead, Jackie. For the patients, or if you wanted to team up with your hospital, is there a, what's the cost? No cost. Everything okay. we do is free. This is fabulous. Yeah, thank you. Thank you it is. It is very fabulous. About it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? I hope I'm putting it down. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Quite all right. No worries. Well, Lynn, again, thank you for joining us today. Um, if we have any other questions, we'll pass them on your way. Please Otherwise, do. Otherwise, uh, you'll be uh, seeing our email follow up shortly within the next week or so. And uh, we look forward to, to hearing more inspiring stories from the Inspire program. So it's a truly amazing program. Thank you for joining us.